Alrighty then, um, uh, what is up guys, it's your boy Kieran Rodriguez, kicking it live with you guys with some NBA 2K15, um, the, uh, Angelo series, so, let's get right to it, um, so obviously, you know, we're just, uh, trying to, um, you know, keep the videos to, to like maybe two, three, or five videos, you know, per, per person, and then I kind of switched up. But, um, now this is going to be the first one, and then I'm going to do four more games, and then I'm going to just, you know, switch it up every guy and try to, try to get that done. Because I do want to post, um, some, some of the other my players that people probably won't want to see. So, uh, yeah. So, um, now that, you know, everything's set, I do want to say special thanks to Nike Faller for giving me this, uh, you know, awesome tutorial on how to get a workaround for getting a shoe without getting a shoe deal. So, you know, this actually does work with every single Nike. Uh, well, every single Nike shoe, every single type of brand shoe, like all type of brand shoes. So if you guys are wondering how to do it, just look up Nike Faller's shoe tutorial and uh, he will lead you there. Um, it's definitely a very good, very good idea that I... Uh, decided to say that for this video also on top of that um you know but there's only like a little catch um right after your first season your shoes are going to reset by itself and on top of that it's going to probably do the same thing when you get traded too so like let's just say because i just got traded to the chicago bulls so what happened was that um <laughs> oh, nice and one by Taj Gibson. But what happened was that my shoes reset it on me, and I had to go back in there and delete the home and away shoes for both different types of brands. So, so yeah, like you know, like that's just something just for me to you know tell you guys and make sure that you guys know. Uh, just like just in advance. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. What are some other things I wanted to explain? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <clears throat> Really got some good news today, like, like shouldn't be good news, but it's kind of bad news, you know, like, I don't really know, but, um, unfortunately, you know, with the whole Derrick Rose, uh, um, injury, well, not unfortunately, it's, like, really good news, so, with Derrick Rose having his surgery, it came out to become successful, and he is expected to have to recover for four weeks. So, if we do the math correctly, guys, I think I was a little bit lucky to, you know, see, have Derrick Rose come back. So, you know, we're only going to miss Rose for a good uh, four weeks. So, you know, like, I know that, like, personally, I know that's not something that people want, but, you know, hey, hey, like, technically it's better than something. You know what I mean? Because by the time when the playoffs come, Rose is going to be back healthy. So, you know, this is this is definitely going to be a really good, really good perk for us. Because I was I was thinking Rose was going to be out for like two months, like four to six months or something. So, you no, know, that's why I was just kind of like a little bit worried that you know we weren't going to expect a really good season. And look at that dunk! What <coughs> like what the heck? So, um, yeah, pretty much Derrick Rose, he is expected to be back in, um, like the doctor said four weeks, so hopefully that's true. Could even be back in maybe three, who knows. But, um, you know, like, I'm pretty excited because, uh, you know, this is a team that I'm going to talk about today, the Washington Wizards. Now, let's, let's kind of go back into the timeline and see what happened. The Washington Wizards had John Wall, right? And John Wall, you know, my friend who's a really good sports talker. Shout out to Mr. Joey Harrington. But, uh, he tells me that, you know, we can't guard John Wall. That's true. But, did he ever tell you, well, did he ever tell me that John Wall can't, can't guard a Derrick Rose? So, you know... Well, let me break it down to you. Derrick Rose is a high caliber combo guard um, person, so he can he can really you know drive to the rim just as good as what John Wall can do. 
And don't get me wrong, the last time these two met was back in... Well, I know, like, they did met, they did meet this year, but... You know, like, the very first time that they've actually went up against each other had to be 2011, when John Wall was a rookie. And Rose, he was like a sophomore in the NBA, so... But when you think about it, that was his rookie. That was, no, that was um, uh, that was his uh, uh, most valuable player year. Yeah, the MVP year. So pretty much, you can't really lie that Rose was having a really blowout season. But let's just talk about what what's going to happen now. Do I really think John Wall can really shut down Derrick Rose in the playoffs if we ever get to that level or to that certain point or even? Like, how are we going to face up against the Hawks? Because last time, like, you guys already knew, like, last time we faced the Hawks was uh, back in 2011. And those guys, they did put up a good all right fight. But, you know, Rose just had, like, the better games. And he just tried harder. So maybe my question to you guys is that, do you guys think Derrick Rose is going to make a huge comeback for these playoffs that are yet to come in, like, two months? Or, or, or possibly even, yeah, it should be two or three months, but, you know, with everything progressing and, you know, all these freaking player injuries and crap, like, I don't know. It's, it's something yet to, like, yet to happen. Um, yeah, what are some other things I wanted to bring up? Um, oh, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, with everything with, with Rose and Wall, I think Rose would still have a better game than Wall, you know, every single time in the playoffs, but it's going to be hard, you know what I mean? Because, you know, everybody has to commit. Everybody has to commit to the win, so, you know, if we could be lucky enough to get a good, decent win every night, you know, like every night and day, then personally, I don't really see a problem, you know? Derrick Rose, he's by far one of my favorite players, but, you know... <laughs> John Wall, he he's a hype, but you know I, I feel like he's still got plenty of plenty of learning to do. But <laughs> nice shot by John Wall. But um, I don't know, like John Wall, like let's talk about him. What has he done this year that's really make people think like, oh, is he like you know like is he up for the freaking MVP race or or like is he up to become you know the best first time leading point guard? Like I don't know. Just something like you know, well, you know, with all due respect, like very good player, but you know, like I personally don't think he's that that good. Like he can he can still play. Like don't get me wrong, but it's just like Rose knows more about the playoffs than Wall does. And then and then you gotta think about it like this, guys. Like this is a brand new squad that they kind of developed with Paul Pierce and them. And, um, yeah, who was the other guy? Like, like I thought it was going to be freaking Andre Blatch, but he already played for the Wizards back then. <laughs> yeah, Andre. He should have went back to Brooklyn, but... I don't know, you lose some, you win some. But, um, you know, do I really think the, the Wizards will beat us? Personally, no, because we have uh, Rose coming back. And Rose actually knows a lot more than Wall. Like, to, to a more certain extent, and let me explain that. But I mean, like, he knows more than Wall. He knows how to play the game better than Wall. He knows, like, his, his caliber of technique. And, you know, he, here's the thing about getting older. Like, the older you get, the more smarter you have to be. So, my, my point that I'm trying to make is that I feel like Rose, he has a better, he has a better intelligence about the game than Wall does. And Rose really focuses more on the game than than most point guards, you know, <clears throat> this year he's, he's been almost averaging like 20 points per game, so <laughs> you already know Rose is already back, but he could have could probably average 16, like, I don't really know, but, uh, <laughs> you know, my boy Derek Rose, he just gets better every single year, so, you know, when he starts getting, getting ready for next season, uh, you sure as heck that we're going to be going for a chip, but you know what, like, from what I've heard is that Tom Thibodeau, he's not going to be our coach anymore because of his contract deal, and he, he probably just didn't really get at it, di didn't really get everything, you know, set up with like the whole, you know, like NBA and, and stuff like that, like trying to get us a ring throughout the past five years. So, 
you know, I guess, I guess that was like the whole main, main problem. But um, yeah, with like everything else, like I can't really lie. Like, you know, Tom Thibodeau, great guy, but you know, he's the centerpiece of our defense. Like, he's the one that kind of really gave us this good defense. And I don't know who's gonna be our next coach, to be honest. Like, can't just call up uh, Phil Jackson. Or maybe we can. Or maybe we can. Now that I think about it, could we get Phil Jackson in the in the picture? Like that could be a good that could be a really good pickup for a coach, you know what I mean? Phil Jackson coming back to the Bulls. Like how how crazy would that be? Like <laughs> like <clears throat> like we like we're we're literally seeing a bull a Chicago Bull player that's Starting to replicate Michael Jordan's style of play, and guess who it is, guys? It it sure is it sure is heck not um Doug McDermott or Tony Snell. It's your boy Jimmy Butler. And if you've seen Jimmy Butler play, he's a very versatile player. This this guy, ever since we picked him up, we just been on a tear every single game. Like when I what I mean by that guys is that Jim, Jimmy just knows how to play and he's very very good he's very very scoring like as a he has a very tough mentality now like he started growing up now so I personally feel like that we're gonna have a very solid team but the only question is, is that like you know like are we gonna be that team smart enough to pick up a really good coach so. No, like I think Phil Jackson, he's not retired yet, but I know that he's like the he's like the GM for the Knicks, and I don't even understand why he even got the job with the Knicks. Like, why? <laughs> like why couldn't he become like a like the coach for the Knicks so that way the Knicks could be winning more games? Like, come on, Knicks! But who cares about the Knicks? Like, you know, the Knicks ain't my team no more. Nor. Nor, nor what, what were they ever my team. It's just that so many things happened and so many trades happened. And boom. No more playoff runs. Which I'm very surprised because, you know, like we like we all were to think Carmelo was going to have a very good season. But it just didn't seem like it like that. It's just like, <laughs> now they're crap. But, <coughs> yeah, moving on. Um... Like, what, like, what's our playoff prediction? Um, personally, I think uh, we'll probably be seated a four or a three. But usually, you know, like we want to try to get up to the highest spot possible. So, like, I'm, I'm looking at the four and the three, like usual, like we always do, you know, in the playoffs. Because we usually make it up to the four or three seed. Actually, to be honest, guys, if you guys haven't seen my... My GM series for uh, Bulls for um, trying to uh, get Andrew Wiggins and try to get Jabari Parker on the squad. Um, I will try to get that out as soon as possible. It's just that every time when I play this game, it always crashes on me. When I put in Jabari Parker and Andrew Wiggins. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's my that's my goal. Try to get Andrew Wiggins or Jabari Parker. But um, what? Let's just talk about that. Um. Oh boy, actually, burping a lot. Um, yeah. So if we had Bari and Wiggins, do you know how crazy of a team that would be? Like that would be crazy. Like legit. Like Jabari Parker and Andrew Wiggins. Like what type of team in the name of God would would ever? be able to pick up those two and let's talk about it like you know this is why i like having conversations about this but you know the first time these two faced each other was when duke and kansas had their little tiny tournament brawl well no it's, it's not like a brawl but you know the tournament game and to be honest like you know it sucked that my boys duke duke boys we we lost <laughs> lost in that tournament against crazy Mercer but you know I'm gonna talk about that next in the next video or actually yeah you know I'll do it in the next episode but hey guys I'll talk to you later and I'll see you guys in the next one peace